brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. Suds, suds, it's time for more suds. Welcome, everyone. You know it's that time. Oh, cool. I'm part of everyone. I'm so happy. <laughs> um, actually, you're not. What's that optional up there? So I was just wondering. Cool. And it he wasn't, just barges it wasn't right our, Oh, in. I'm sorry. You were not talking to me. You it were wasn't talking to our everyone option. Else. Okay. <sighs> good afternoon or good evening, ladies and gents. I'm your hostess, good old gal Juliana, and with me today for yet another wonderful episode is good old boy Dave. Wonderful, huh? So I this like is going to be different. Optimistic, right up front. Yeah. Well, we haven't time, had time Have to screw this Dave? one up. <laughs> There's always time. And live for another appearance. We've missed you so much. Mm. Good old boy Jason. So happy to be back. Hello, everyone. He's lying. And another one who has been busy doing things. God's beer work. Yes, God's beer work. Good old boy Sparky. That's right. And last but not least, El Jefe. Hey, everybody. <laughs> this is good old boy Mike once again. Please do not turn your station off right now. I think least would be a fair summation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, but it's going to be such a great episode. <clears throat> um, I like that. She said wonderful and great in the first five minutes. Wow. You know, start off high. <laughs> Have you met Dave? She's sitting the, <laughs> the expectations are so high right pretty now. Pretty high right now, yeah. They'll change. Yep. Don't we worry. drank a lot of apple juice, though, yeah. so. Yes, yes. And speaking of apple juice, today's episode features some really amazing songs. I am a cider drinker. I drink it all on the day. I am a cider drinker. Oh, my hands. Do <laughs> you think anybody's still listening oh, at this point? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, they might be. Yeah, they might not. War, war, so a while ago, um, we did kind of an introductory cider episode called Cider 101, um, otherwise known as Johnny Friggin' Appleseed. So look in our past episodes in our back catalog um, and listen to that if you've never been indoctrinated into the world of ciders. For those of you that have, this is another episode. It's probably wonderful and great. <laughs> All at the same time. I don't think Mike was on that one, so it might have been. Mm, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, good old boy Jason was on that episode. Definitely. And he gave us some great information about what cider is and different styles. Jason, before we get going, why don't you give us a quick rundown on what cider is and how it's made? Yeah, cider is a pretty simple beverage, to be honest, but uh, like wine, uh, it can carry a huge amount of complexity and variation. Uh, just from different varietals of fruit, but cider at its core is fermented apple juice. Well, hard cider at its core. Get it? He is said core twice. <laughs> I, I, I like the wink. Word core. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. <laughs> so you can have uh, uh, you know just very simple ciders, which straight apple juice, hundred percent apple juice, fermented with. Uh, either cultured yeast or uh, you get, want to get real traditional and go those farmhouse styles, you can do uh, just harvested yeast from the skins of the fruit themselves and natural yeast from the environment. Uh, that's that's the most traditional way to do it. Yeah, but are there cider drinking songs? There are cider drinking songs. <laughs> there are a plethora. Don't do it again, please. The Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord. For giving me the things I need, the sun and rain and an apple tree that he is good to me. Mike, it sounds like, it sounds like somebody out of St. Pete again, doesn't it? It's also, he has an awful voice. Also, I never realized you were wearing breeches. How did, <laughs> like, did you when put did those that on happen? just for that song? <laughs> well, you know, it's just that Farley was talking about how, you know, the 
uh, you know, what makes up a cider, but I'm like, well, what makes up a good experience is you have, a, have to have a good drinking song. So, you yeah, know. drinking breaches. Unfortunately, we don't have any good drinking songs. Beer we drinking only have songs, that, you know, so. Just the one? All of all the cider drinking songs, of all the cider drinking songs, we had, we had to be shot our wad with yeah. those two songs. Wow, hey, 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 whoa! <laughs> That'll get you cut off. So we've said the word "great, wonderful, and shot our wad" in the first ten <laughs> minutes. Please do not turn the show off just yet. It will get better. <laughs> Who knows what we'll say next? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> Quick, cut my cut his mic off. Yeah. yeah, at least we hope. Um, Jason, were you done? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Me. Well, he's packing Whoa. up his stuff. So oh, he might hey, good, good talk. Jason good talk. has left the building. Yeah, Farley first, out. First part about sitting at this table is have a good exit strategy. That was it. Yeah, you just, she just she just gave you an out right there. You just say tuck hmm. and roll. I believe that I, always, I am done. Yes. I always keep one of those ninja smoke bombs ready. So smoke bombs. Too. I don't know why they keep inviting me. I don't <laughs> like cider. I never drink the stuff. <laughs> Well, I just wanted to make sure because it seemed like you were somewhat interrupted. No, no, that's fine. Okay. Like I said, it's a pretty simple beverage, but you can you can uh, do all sorts of things to increase complexity, uh, play with varietals, additions, fruit, spices, you name it. And we have some of those examples today in our in our tasting notes. Exactly. Cool. Uh, cider has been popular in places like France and England for a long time. Even France. And it used to be a staple in America many years ago, but it fell into a deep decline for about a hundred years or so uh, in the U.S. Now it is coming back in a big way, along with things like craft beer, artisanal foods, mead, and micro distilling. Do you have anything other than beer here? (laughs) (laughs) This guy. Yeah. Somebody cut him off. Mm. Not just his mic. Uh, <laughs> Sparky, why, why do you think cider is becoming so popular? Well, I think it's it's a couple of reasons. Uh, one, uh, probably my biggest pet peeve is the uh, crazy gluten-free, sensitive, and tolerant people. I think the actual statistics, I think it's like, uh, like a 0.5% of people are actually <clears throat> have a gluten allergy. There's no such thing as gluten sensitivity or anything like that, but... For God bless those people that. But it makes me feel tired. I know, but you're special <laughs> because you get to have your own. Like I'm sensitive to this. And my skin breaks out. Yes, and hives, but and my butt um, hurts a lot. Yes, well, avoid beer. <laughs> Forget <laughs> Bud Light. Go for that cider. I get um, bloated. <laughs> but um. Wow. How can but yeah, you tell? I think I think. <laughs> I think that uh, you know. I think. I, I think that it, it provides more options. I mean, I think we went through a, a long period of time in this country where American light lager kind of took over the world and, and, you know, along with the craft beer revolution, I'd say there's a revolution of wine going on right now too. Um, you know, much more affordable. Come on now. Come on. Much more affordable, much That's more available. Wine. It's a revolution of oh. flavor going on. Everybody wants to get uh, bright flavors, uh, rich flavors, they want to get flavor back in their foods, back in their beverages, and they want to get variety back in their lives. Absolutely. And I think there's, you know, I mean, I hate to say it. No, I don't because it, I hate this too. I, you know, I think all these crazy fad diets that are like, oh, caveman diet or all this other stuff, you know, people are avoiding grains and grain produced products and stuff. So Bastards. I know, right? Cider keys right into that. That gives them an option to have a pint of something that, you know, next to their pals are drinking beer and not necessarily be in that. So that's, that's my theory on it. You know, the whole like gluten craziness the crazy diet thing and Mm. then just again uh, another option but um i think uh brewers too uh, in tap rooms you know you can only serve so many varieties of beer that certain people are not going to like who say i don't like beer at all until you finally have to add something like a cider to kind of capture that last bit of the market and it and it also lets you it also feeds into the farm to table kind of thing too. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think it feeds in the whole like organic, you know, kind of raised from the earth kind of thing. Even though dirt people, that's hippies. what. Yeah, yeah. gosh, freaking hippies. Ugh. I know. Gosh. Anyway, Julie wearing. Well, I think one of the things that really of- you know influenced uh, a lot of that change in the uh, landscape for cider was a lot of what changed for the ingredients themselves. Um, you know, my family happened to have a fairly large, um, you know, apple orchards. And, um, part of what happened is, is, 
um, they were just very plentiful. I mean, it was a, a naturally, you know, uh, cr- it was a natural ca- uh, cash crop. And mm-hmm. um, because the most uh, fruit orchards have such a narrow ability of it being utilized within a lot of food sources, um, as opposed to soybean and grain that can span, you know, a lot of different, you know, uh, products themselves that are used within the American diet. It was just, it was economical for farmers to say, you know, I'm going to grow soybeans or, you know, a grain crop and just plow the, you know, basically the land was more valuable for those cash crops as opposed to as a fruit crop. You know, you bring up another really great point too, is um, really cider apples have died nationwide. I mean, most of the ciders that we have on the market, even your locals and all that stuff, they're using culinary apples rather than cider apples because, People just didn't need them when those, yeah. and, and we've probably lost we lost hundreds whole, of varieties. We lost whole varieties, you yeah. know, through a lot of uh, change in the landscape and the way that uh, land was being utilized, and uh, you know, some of that was displaced by some of those varieties trying to be imported that, frankly, were not the same, were they? No, they weren't suited for their environment. That people, immigrants, tried to bring those in, and uh, the uh, uh, the 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 American taste changed. They wanted that sweeter. Uh, more the, the eating apple, the culinary apple, the, the the apples that cooked well or tasted well to eat right off the shelf. I think it's because all the uh, good cider songs were just went out of and being in vogue. Pop, pop, <laughs> popular music. I'm kill, gonna, kill I, cider. Uh, I'm gonna I, blame prohibition. Yeah, prohibition, and uh, let's let's pray to God we never do a cider song episode. That's that's my Ooh, request. Wow. No, hmm. Mike. No. <laughs> Play it again, Dave. Uh, oh, jeez. I am a cider See, that one's like partial pirate song. A vast me cider. <laughs> very, very specific kind of pirate that I can't so say. Glad this is a radio show. <laughs> okay, fine, fine, fine. Well, this has been some great discussion so far. Um, we'll be right back with even more. More what? <laughs> <laughs> Rolling clouds and crashing surf Iridescent dunes reflecting By the light of a rising glowing moon Seashore mesmerizing Night breeze hypnotizing We've come across these back roads none too soon Look to the left, to the right Keep your eyes on the road, my darling Wondering if we're only passing through Open roads and open windows My hand is yours forever, sweet love Welcome back, everyone, and happy Cider Day. We have had a nice little discussion uh, about why ciders have become so popular. It's so, wonderful. Yes. It's, and great. It's it awesome. might even be awesome. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> it's awesome. Beat me to it. Sorry. No, no, no. No. Great minds think alike from opposite ends of the table. Okay. So today we have a pretty broad range of ciders to discuss, which is, I think, kind of cool. Um, here is the lineup. We're starting off with Virtue Cider from Percheron if I'm saying that correct. It is a cider aged in oak and re-fermented with Brett. Mm. Hmm. Um, then there's Sea Cider from Prohibition, which is an apple wine with molasses and aged in bourbon barrels for six months. Uh, from Tandem Ciders, we have their farmhouse hard apple cider. From Blake's, we have Wayward Winter, which is a cider with elderberries and coriander. Mm. And then last but certainly not least, and... Forgive me, O Canada, for not saying this correctly. Um, Les Vergers de la Colline Milton Star, which is their Cidre Hublon Happy Hop. Don't worry, it's only the French nailed part it. of Canada. Yep. Half Gainer, you nailed it. Thanks. Dave? What? Oh, yeah. Actually, I think you can fake all French words. If you just basically lower your jaw and just let all the muscles go, you know. <laughs> I think you can just anyone can sound French. If you do that, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you do that, won't you poop yourself? If you no. just let all your muscles. All right, go? Dave. Oh, 
<laughs> overshare. Overshare. We'll be uh, discussing and rating these ciders with these Suds ratings plus our signature belching sounds. Here are those ratings now. That sucks. Give me anything but a Crispin. Number two, was that a belch? Number three, ah, what a relief. Oh, crap. I hit the wrong <laughs> that is not the name of that button. Oh, crap. <laughs> number four, that would be a number two. Yeah, right? right, yeah, that's what's uh, A number four, a body should really not make that sound. <laughs> and number five, Listen to that hang time. Give me another. I think I'd have these memorized by now. Sadly, I don't. Yeah, sadly, you don't. Okay, since you've done such a stellar job. I think oh. it was wonderful. Was it great? <laughs> the hills are alive with the sound of cider. Um, I don't know. Uh, why don't you start us off and talk about cider number one? Uh, okay, fine. <laughs> so cider number one is that French Canadian one that she said, but I don't know if I can say it. Uh, I'm going to say Api Hop Cidra, uh, which means cider with hops and oppies. Uh, this is a uh, cider, apparently, uh, according to the product description, and it is an ABV of six and a half percent, which that's pretty low for a cider. That's like a session cider. Kind of, maybe, I don't know, maybe not. Farley's looking at me weird. Uh, bottle fermented. That He's means, doing that already, dear. That means it's, uh, <laughs> bottle fermented means it was fermented in the bottle, in case anybody was wondering. That's a technical term. <laughs> As the French would have us believe. This I is, agree. uh. That's worthy of a slow <laughs> clap right there. <laughs> Yeah. I'll, you know okay. what? The guy with the buttons can give himself a pause anytime he, he wants. He can change the narrative anytime he wants. That's right. <laughs> this is a good time to hit the fast forward button. Dear uh, this is an amazing <laughs> fusion of apple and hops to enjoy on Lee's. I don't know what that means. What does Lee's mean in French? Um, We're not allowed to talk about it in, oh. on this so, radio format. Oh, Lee, like a person. So if you're on... No, never mind. Well, uh, grapefruit and uh, lemon... <laughs> Uh, exhilarate your senses and climax. Uh oh, we're getting we're getting deep here. Uh, climax with spicy evergreen notes. Oh, this is so hot. A citrus Blush. fruit bouquet or bouquet? Is it bouquet? Bouquet, bouquet, with just a hint of acidity in the mouth and the nice fullness to finish. In the mouth. Did you say flowness? Through delight. <laughs> that was <Okay>. great, Dave. <laughs> I think we made history today. I'm glad uh, I was here. Yeah. Whew, okay. I catch my breath. I have a little bit of cider. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Tell us more. <laughs> um, I really like this one. It's um, it's kind of funky. From the from the. Um, I don't get a lot of hop myself, but you know me, I'm not known for my palate, just my awesome looks. And so, um, but I, I really yeah. like yeah. the uh, the dry finish on this, shut your face. And uh, I think uh, I, I, this was probably my favorite of the flight, and I gave it a four. Hmm. Uh, uh, uh. Go to boy, Jason. What do you think of this? You know, this one was uh, was was not well, not not bad at all. I enjoyed it. It, uh, I think there was. You mentioned a little bit of a little bit of funk. I got a light leather aroma out of it. Uh, very light, not 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 uh, overpowering. Uh, nice bit of apple in this one. The apple did come through, but I think where you were saying you didn't see the the hops necessarily or taste mm -hmm. the hops. I think the little citrus notes that might oh, come through. Right, right. That's probably from the yeah. from the hop. Could uh, you possibly. taste the climax? I could not taste the climax. I, 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 I could It was a little salty. I couldn't reach <laughs> wonderful. I couldn't reach four on this one. I had to give it a three. Mm. Fair enough. Good old boy Sparky. Um so I definitely thought it was very tart, very low sugar. Um there was a little bit of funkiness, almost astringent. Uh, I definitely got 
you know, the, the more citrusy hops going on in it. Um, overall though, I just, I really didn't care for it so much. I mean, it just, uh, just didn't seem very balanced to me. Um, and I, and I, I'm sorry, I had to give it a, a two on this one. Um, probably one of my least favorite ones that we tried. What's your problem with Canada? Uh, well, let me tell you some story about the Canucks. <laughs> wow. Sidebar. <laughs> Banned once again. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad we uh, took care of that early. Go to my mic. What do you think of this beer? So I wrote down, uh, I mean, kind beer, of, uh, listen to me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> on the cider. Um, so for the, uh, Milton Star Hublon Opry Hop Cider. Gesundheit. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, I wrote down kind of a citrus nose. Um, it was almost like an acidic kind of floral, um, you know, kind of aroma about it. Uh, you know, it definitely was tart and sweet, um, you know, on the on the taste. Uh, kind of a drying finish. You used astringent. I thought it was kind of drying. I think both those are in that same wheelhouse. Um, I thought what was interesting is I really thought that has zero hop influence. So... Um, and, uh, probably you were saying that that was, uh, I, I didn't get a ton of, of what I would call a hop character, but what little eh, citrusy notes can sometimes come from hops. So yeah. that, you know, that may have been where, where some of people picked well, up. I guess hops probably play a little different what would be interesting. than they do. Well, beer, I, you know? I would say if they use citra hops off this, you know, I can see where some of that, but any of the sea hops, uh, Centennial, yeah. Cascade, Citra. But I think it was just that, uh, traditional bitterness that you would have even have had coming off, you know, most of those, I didn't, that wasn't there at all. So no, that IBU bitterness wasn't there. Yeah. Well, I wonder if they dry hopped it or something, maybe. So it would be. I don't know. It got uh, very. They're not allowed to do that in French. Uh, um, no, no I just wrote down. Hopping. I thought this was an average sweet tart cider. My suds rating is a three. <laughs> Juliana. I thought this was really interesting um, because it was it, it was tart and it had. Um, the bit of funk to it, you know, versus the other ciders that we had in the flight, which were a bit sweeter, for lack of a better word. Um, and and the citrus on it, it to me, it was hoppy citrus. It, you know what I mean? So, like, my palate was, like, confused because I wanted it to be a beer, and it wasn't. You know what I mean? It was a lot lighter. Um, the color on it I thought was gorgeous, and the aroma I thought was really nice, too, though. So I, I think for somebody who really enjoys... An almost, I hate to say bitter taste, but an almost bitter taste, they might really enjoy this particular cider. I know that, that probably doesn't make any sense. You shouldn't Fine. be bitter about it. It's I'm okay. not being bitter about it, but I liked it, though. I gave it a three. Okay. Mm-hmm. Moving on. Go to boy Jason. What cider would you like to talk dun, about? Dun, dun. Well, I think my favorite of the day um, was the Tandem Ciders Farmhouse Hard Apple Cider. Uh, This one just had a really beautiful, bright aroma to me. A lot of character from the apples actually made it through the fermentation process. Uh, So nice uh, apple aroma. Thought it was pretty soft and uh, well-rounded, both in mouthfeel and flavors. Uh, Just a bit thin, maybe, in, in places. Kind of a eh, relatively dry, not completely dried out uh, finish on it, but a little dry on the finish. Um, like I said, this was probably my favorite of the day. Just thought it was pretty well rounded. I gave it a four. <coughs> Excuse me. Good old boy, Sparky. What did you think of this cider? Um, I I agree with uh, Jason on many of those counts. I mean, definitely very tart, dry. I thought it was a nice nice balance, much nicer balance than the previous one that we had. So a lot more flavors were present there. Um, I thought it had horse blanket. I'm sorry, no. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was uh, I, I, interestingly enough, I thought it was uh, uh, even though the pretty low sugar i thought it was still sweeter than some of the other ones that we had i think we really ended up with a lineup of some very tart ciders today uh in general but uh i i, I enjoyed it a little bit of funk uh i gave it a four i, I enjoyed it go to blind mike what'd you think of this cider so for the tandem ciders farmhouse um i wrote down the nose was really faint off this i mean you could barely smell anything in the glass um, I think probably at least everything in this flight, this was very apple forward. You know, sometimes when people hand you a cider, you go, I don't get it. Where's the apple in this? And a lot of times it's the sugar component is the thing that gets buried or eaten alive by the, you know, uh, through fermentation. And you wind up with 
uh, something that is more dry or tart. That's the thing I like about this is that the apple is still there, you know, and, and you can taste it. So it was kind of tart, you know, in the middle. Um, this reminded me of, you know, I think of a, a lot of uh, daily, you know, ciders that I've had. Um, if I had to say it's a Vindapa for uh, the cider world, it is a good daily, you know, cider, um, kind of a neutral finish. Uh, I like this kind of all the way around. I thought it was just a good solid three. <laughs> This one was very old school for me. It reminded me of my grandmother's apple pie. I had like... Did um, it get you drunk? No, oh. it didn't get me drunk, sadly. Oh, that kind of apple pie. Whoa. <laughs> wow. No, no, yes. like moonshine apple pie. That's what oh, I always... No. I always thought you were going like no. American pie. Like, Good Lord, Dave. Oh. Sparky, dude. <laughs> we're enabling all wow, of the worst man. bad behaviors with each other. Wow. I thought those group therapy sessions would work for Dave. <laughs> Wait, this this isn't a group therapy session? Bad group. Clearly not. No, clearly not. You Robert. told me this was an intervention. <laughs> right. <laughs> for who? I thought it was like roulette. We didn't know <laughs> somebody at this table was having an intervention. Russian roulette intervention. <laughs> nice. Wow. Nice. Nice. Um, no, I just, to me, it's like an old school apple flavor that you just don't see much anymore. So I really enjoyed that. Um, I got a little spiciness too. Like I almost want to say that I, I got it like a bit of ap- um, cinnamony nutmeginess on it. That may sound weird. Um, anyways, just really light, really clean, very old school again. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I gave it a four. <laughs> Hey, go to Boy Sparky. Which cider do you want to talk about? Hey. Um, let's see. Wait a off, minute. I didn't get to say what I think about oh. quickly. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. Fine. You know what? I had something cool to say about it. But I'm just going to say uh, that it was good. And I gave it a four. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. Uh, that was good. <laughs> Autopilot. Uh, totally, like that. Totally oh my planned. god, the totally surface planned. has become sentient. That's wow. awesome. Okay, anyways. <laughs> so I had Funny my evil plan comes to <laughs> comes to work. <laughs> um so I had the virtue cider Perceron. How's that? Is that good? All right. Bueno. This Norman style blend of last season's high acid Michigan apples is aged in French oak and refermented with wild yeast. Oh, they gave us acid? We <laughs> later oh, we man. finished Percheron with fresh pressed apple juice for a touch of sweetness. Um so it's a French farm style cider, um aged in French oak. It's naturally gluten free. And uh ABV is five point five and uh I, I usually tend to go to food all the time. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm wearing an ascot now. Thank you very much. Yeah. That just happened. Put an um, umbrella in it. <laughs> um, so tasting notes. Percheron has notes of vanilla and wonderful aroma of apple blossom with a hint of orange. It is a gentle tart cider with a tannic finish. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, you're next, Mike. You're next. What's your turn? Yeah. Uh-huh. So this was by far my favorite. It was funky. I was a little bit sweeter. Uh, you totally got uh, some really cool yeast strain stuff going in there. It was almost smoky, funky. I kept thinking I would have loved to have some like funky, stinky cheese and maybe some mm. sausage or charcuterie with this. I usually tend to go food with everything that I do. So I just wanted a, the entire plate of things that would make me unapproachable for the rest of the evening. I would give it a. Oh, you don't need Well, stuff. I was about to say, yeah, just, uh, the, just bring your more so than usual. More so than usual. <laughs> So I, I had to give that a five. That was by far my favorite. Whoa. And I think the rest of the bottle went bad, so I'm going to finish that off for you. <laughs> Sons of guns, you're welcome. I'm going to make a video of him chugging the rest of the bottle. I wow. don't know what that means. Yes, I do. I'm sorry. Yes, you do. Um, go to my mic. What do you think? So uh, Percheron, is that how we're saying it? <clears throat> um, um, quick notes that I have on this. Kind of wood on the nose. Um, the See Almost what you did there. Smells like uh, apple <laughs> rind. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> you know, and we talked about this at, Dave, at Dave's group therapy class. So um, the citrus component I thought was kind of sweet that was coming through this. So they had orange, you know, in their own tasting notes. I, you know, I can buy that. Tangelo, you know, maybe kind of down that path. 
Um, I thought it was just a good average cider. My rating for this is a three. I'm like Sparky. I really love this. Um, the nose on it was kind of barnyardy. And then you taste it, and I get that vanilla mixed with the apple, mixed with a little funk and a little spiciness in the background. And I thought, wow, this is like really complex and not your grandma's apple cider. Um, for sure. Loved it. Gave it a four. Good boy, Dave. Uh, <laughs> hey, boo. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Uh, I like it. I thought it was pretty good. I, I like the, uh, the mouthfeel. I think it has a really good, um, aftertaste as well. Um, you know, if you're going to get something in your beard and taste it for a while, might as well taste good. So I'll give this little dog a three. Good old boy, Jason. What'd you think of this cider? Oh, uh, this was my second favorite of the day. Uh, following that tandem cider we just talked about, um, this one, to me, I got the the kind of the Brett nose that slightly I mean, you described barnyard, a little bit of funk in the nose, uh, which I like. Uh, I got a fruit forward. The, the citrus was in there. It was in there that uh, the the orange and, and lemon and, and that that. Uh, but I did pick up enough apple and a slight bit of acidity. Uh, love the color on it. Brilliantly clear. Nice uh, nice golden hue to it. Um, like I said, this is my second favorite of the day. Uh, well-rounded, complex. I gave this one a four. Wow. Uh, uh, so I keep on wondering if the French have cider drinking songs. They must. <laughs> they, they have they songs have about everything. You know what the bad part, though, is? They're all in French. Ah, we oui. Are they anymore? <laughs> We've actually re- renamed them as freedom songs. Now is what we call them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a real thing. Do they dump? Um, do they dump everything for a minute in wood in France? Uh, the uh, for cider, or do they use steel? They haven't discovered glass yet. Wow, mm, interesting. Wow, those Frenchmen, they know their wood though. That's impressive. Okay, we'll be back in a minute with some more tasty notes. But baby, the whole elation Riding down this lover's avenue As slow as a willow blows Or as fast as the whirlwind grows We glide beneath the stars in cobalt blue Look to the left, to the right Keep your eyes on the road, my darling Wondering if we're only passing through Open roads and open windows My hand is yours forever, sweet love Our eyes ahead on these back roads with a view Welcome back, everyone. It is a day of ciders and... And French drinking songs. And French drinking songs. I am a cider drinker. (coughs) In French. Not (laughs) French-Irish. Monsieur. (laughs) Fryrish. (laughs) Fryrish. (laughs) Ooh la la. Okay. um, Next (laughs) cider up for grabs will be spoken for by good old boy Mike. Sparky, don't grab me. Okay. You're still wearing pantaloons. I can't right. help it. <laughs> so uh, Blake's Wayward Winter Hard Cider um, is, uh, uh, here's their quick description on this. Where we come from, winters are pretty rough. Since we can't run from it, we do what we do best. We make hard cider. By combining elderberries harvested at the end of the season, with subtle citrus notes of coriander, we've crafted a cider that warms the soul through even the most wayward of winters. Wow, man, that is a thick marketing crap. All right, so <laughs> wow, <laughs> the uh, that we love. Yeah, mm-hmm. the ABV on this is six point five percent. My own tasting notes here on Blake's Wayward Winter Hard, hard Cider. The first thing that caught my attention was I really thought this had a very complex uh, floral nose. 
Um, it struck me as which one of these things is not like the other. That's for sure. Um, there were a lot of berries, uh, that were coming off this and I started to, um, think about, you know, what type of berries were really playing into this. Um, the, it was a combination of a lot of the floral components. You would get off berries as well as honeysuckle. So it was kind of a, but those were interplay. I wrote down blueberries, sweet berries, you know, maybe even a touch of some herbal component, almost like a sage was kind of setting into this. I really enjoyed uh, the complex, you know, nature of this. I thought it was uh, uh, very different than some of the other ones. Uh, this is probably something I would have one glass of and say, hmm, wow, that was satisfying. My sedge rating for the Blake's Wayward Winter Hard Cider is a four. <laughs> Juliana. This one was cool because it was so completely different. It wasn't wonderful or great. No, it was cool, man. <laughs> Cold blooded. It was, cool. it was it was cool. Um, and not just because it comes from up north. Um because it comes from the refrigerator. It's cool. Get it? Cool. Refrigerator. I see what you did there. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's pretty Yeah. Just somebody, talk over him. Somebody okay. write yeah. me and tell me what an elderberry tastes like. I'm still waiting. Well, your like mother a, was a hamster <laughs> and an elderberry is what your father It's like a younger berry, <laughs> but with some Hang more on, wrinkles. Let me, let me put my teeth in and then I'll see what, you know, it tastes like. So. But the fl- uh, yeah, okay. Um <laughs> The floralness on it, uh, on the nose, is what kind of threw me because I wasn't really expecting that, but there it was. Um, and the color is gorgeous. I mean, it is not your average cider either. Um, flavor-wise, though, it was it, it was almost too fruity for me and not enough appliness, if that makes any sense. I just was tasting whatever berries and, and honeysuckle. I was getting a lot of honeysuckle out of that, which I thought was cool, but yet weird because i wasn't expecting it anyways um although i thought it was good and i'll probably like try to find another bottle next year i gave it a three <laughs> good boy dave what do you uh, think of this <clears throat> i really liked this uh this one a lot i, I thought it had a very complex f- uh flavor not cidery uh at all to me it was it was but it was almost like um like w- when you get like a mulled wine or something for winter that's got some spices or something in it. So I could definitely see the winter part of this, uh, why they named it that way. Um, it, 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 to me, this would be something really good with like a, like a big steak or something like some, some beef, beef. Um, my beef is strong. And, um, so <laughs> I, 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 uh, yeah, that's right. I said it. And it's recorded. Um, so I will uh, I will give this uh, Wayward Winter a four. Good old boy, Jason. What did you think of this cider? Well, I'm going to be the detractor here. This I swung the other way here. This is my least favorite of the day. Um, I do understand this one. It does have a lot of complexity, uh, but it lost the cider character for me. Uh, if we're if we're tasting these ciders and judging them as ciders, I did not get enough apple character. Definitely got that uh, floral and spicy nose from the coriander. A little bit of citrus maybe in there. Definitely strong berry aromas and flavors. But uh, like I said, just just didn't have the apple character I was that looking for. That coriander does jump out at you, doesn't it? It, it has a tendency to do that. I like the flavor combination of elderberry and the coriander. I like the mix. I just don't think it was well executed in this cider. And uh, I thought it had kind of a thin mouthfeel, but I do have to agree with Juliana. Color, absolutely beautiful. Uh, clear, ruby, red-hued, rosé-hued. Um, I just didn't want to drink the entire portion that I had. I've got to give this one a two. Sorry, guys. Okay. I think it sucks. I think that sucks. I think it sucks. Good old boy Sparky. So um, I think uh, I I tend to agree with Jason. I I don't think the flavors were as balanced. And I think also I think I'm a little bit jaded on all winter flavored items right now. I'm tired of. Winter herbs and winter shandies and winter. Says the man who had a strawberry shandy the other day. And uh, are, you, are you ready for spring? It, well, it was it was watermelon, <laughs> and then, it's, and then a, 
then a summer, and then a grapefruit. But yes, um, no, I'm not ready for any more winter products or winterized products for that matter. But um, but yeah, I, 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 it was a little, uh, I I thought it was a little bit out of whack on the balance. Um, I did think of Monty Python with your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. (laughs) But I, I would, I would have to give this overall, I think a three. There you go. Good old boy, Mike. What did you think of this cider? He already said, Oh yeah, that's right. I guess you did. I introduced it as great and wonderful, yeah, yeah, and then everybody else okay. panned it. <laughs> All right, fine, fine, fine. I guess it's because I'm so excited about mine. Yay! I get to talk about mine. Okay. Um, Next up, Juliana's hard cider. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm going to talk about the sea cider called Prohibition, um, which is essentially an apple wine with molasses and aged in bar- in bourbon barrels. So uh, from their de- commercial description, um, they also call it Rum Runner too. So those of you that are looking for it, some labels it says Rum Runner and some labels it just says Prohibition. Um, crafted with homegrown heritage apples, Rum Runner's apples are hand-pressed using their traditional rack and cloth press, slowly fermented with champagne yeast, and then aged in rum-soaked bourbon barrels for a minimum of six months. Aromas of brown sugar and rum show the complexity of this semi-dry sparkling cider. Delicious cold or mold, 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 mold. mold. <laughs> Yeah. You should have mulled that over. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. heated with butter, Rum Runner pairs well with steak, Caribbean, and Moroccan food. And this puppy is 12.5%. Um, and this is their homage to people who, during Prohibition, ran illicit boats full of liquor across the international line in coastal waters. And that can be seen from their cider house. So for all of your relatives from Prohibition days, yeah, it means a lot. Tell them to soak their teeth in this. Um, they could, yes. The seafaring connection was first formed when they obtained Newfoundland screech barrels um, to age one of their cider blends, and then the rum. Isn't that that kid from uh, Say by the Bell? He's, uh, things have not gone well for him. We yeah. should probably dedicate an episode. But he's got his to... own barrels, though. That he must be doing okay. Well, you don't want to know what he did to those barrels. Wow. Ew. Ew. Rum and bourbon barrels were once a cider maker's only storage option, and their use imparted distinctly spirited notes to a traditional cider. So, um, at first, when this was first cracked open, I thought, there's something odd about this cider. Really odd. But I've let it warm, and I've taken multiple sips, and now I'm completely in love. In love, in love. Okay, you can all make your faces, but... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, what I like about this is the molasses smell that's on it and the molasses taste is extraordinary. Molasses? Co- molasses. Molasses. Sorry, I guess it's the northern in me. Yeah. No, no. I, molasses. Like from the asses of moles? Or? Ooh, molasses. I bet that's a French delicacy. It is. No. <laughs> Only when cleaned properly. Uh, now you're going to get us banned from every French restaurant. Uh, Thank you. Banned Dave. once again. No, that combined with the <laughs> rum and like the booziness of the bourbon barrel. I mean, this obviously was not a traditional cider by any stretch of the imagination. Okay. I, but I wasn't wanting that going in. The color on it almost looks like bourbon itself. And I, I just thought this was so cool and so complex and so many layers. Like, I don't get the apple flavor until the very end, and it just blows me away that it's even there. Like, considering the rum and the molasses flavor that I get from it. I really enjoyed it, though, and I gave it a four. Okay, good old boy, Dave. Well, you know, before you... Uh, before you said anything, there was a flavor I could not identify. And now that I know it's mole asses, um, I, the mole asses really come out <laughs> in the nose come, and the, you the flavor. You can see that just you're sliding right <laughs> off the slope, you know, as it was headed this way. Somebody right, had to do it. I Someone know. really wow. had to do it. Um, no, it's uh, the molasses. Uh, I do agree that that is really the dominant flavor here for me. Um, I thought the color really reminded me of like a cognac or something. Uh, but um, 
uh, I don't know. It's pretty good. I'm not loving it. I think the uh, the the booziness kind of dominates a little bit too much for me. But um, as it warms up, I do think it it got a lot better, and I will give it a three. <laughs> Mole ass. I just had to say it one more time. Sorry. Thanks. Good old boy, Jason. I know you've had this before, so. Ah, oh, Seasider. What have you done? What have you done? Uh, coming into this, uh, when I saw this cider on the uh, agenda, on the list for today, I was just terribly excited. Uh, I had the pleasure of tasting this and meeting some of the representatives uh, from the from Seasider at the Seattle Cider Summit here a few years back. And uh, Seattle cider. That's alliteration. There's a there's a series of, of uh, cider tasting cider festivals, uh, San Francisco, Seattle, Portland, Chicago, I believe this year. And uh, just nice, nice event. Enjoyed my time there in Seattle. Uh, this was at the time was probably my favorite cider I had ever tasted, period, bar none, hands down. Wow. Uh, I, I fully expected to come in today, taste this, be blown away again. Give it a five. Call it a day. Uh, Drop the mic. Yeah. Flip yeah. the table. No, wait. That's different. <laughs> but well, unfortunately, that. I might flip the table just because I'm so disappointed. Oh. For whatever happened, for what, I, I don't know the reason, but this one today uh, just did not uh, come across nearly as well to me. There is a lot of complexity. There's a lot of character there. Uh, you know, some some positive notes. That caramel hue, that that bourbon like hue, it's a beautiful beautiful cider to look at. Uh, but I don't know. I got some oxidation. I got some uh, just just a little too much wood in this particular uh, version or this particular batch. I was I was just my my heart fell. My my heart fell when I tasted this today. Uh, like I said, I expected to give it a five. I'm giving it a two. Whoa! Yeah, moly! How the mighty have fallen! Wow! Yeah, and Jay, uh, I definitely did not get wood from this particular <laughs> offering. Um, no, I, I, I thought there were definitely some off flavors in there. I, I, I'd have to wonder about oxidation as well. I mean, I am a huge fan of booze of all stripes. Uh, Absolutely love rum and, and bourbon, and uh, when you combine them with other things, that's always a good thing. But yeah, there were just some off flavors playing around the corners there, and um, it was it was just kind of a boozy mess of uh, combined with that. I mean, I would love to try what you had last time, or if it was you know in its good form. I I do agree that it got better as it warmed up, though. Certainly, um, sorry, I'm gonna have to give it a dose. Mm. Should I give it a deuce? Well, that's going to be later on. Good old boy, Dave, and Mike. hopefully they'll cut the mics before that happens. Wow. What you know, you this think? is one of those moments where uh, my mom's uh, uh, phrase is settling in. If you have nothing nice to say, you should not say it at all. Oh, no. so, uh, if you have nothing nice to say, was, your name must I was, be Mike. <laughs> I was listening at the same time as you guys were going around. So my own tasting notes here on the Seaside of Rum Rudder uh, Prohibition Um you know, kind of faint uh, sweetness on the on the nose. Um, kind of, uh, you know, I thought uh, there was a floral component, was almost like a sweet floral. You know, almost like a melon. Um, I really thought whatever was going on with the barrel, the rum, or the bourbon, um, it was really muted um, there. Um, I uh, I wrote down, uh, you know, just uh, hey, uh, not much going on here. Um, I actually wrote down, this reminded me of a sweet seven up that was actually brown. <laughs> so Ooh, God uh, bless um, America. Don't drink the brown. Maybe seven with up. a little bit of plum. <laughs> <thrown> wow. <in. laughs> yeah. So my sedge rating here is going to be a one. Wasn't that a Frank so. Zappa song? <laughs> don't drink the brown. Seven don't up. drink the giant seven up. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm wow. sorry, but. I, somebody had to take it out back and shoot it because it just not <laughs> you know. I'm sure they make other great stuff. I look forward to trying some other things from Seasider, but don't send us another bottle of this. Have so. you ever seen a man shoot something while wearing pantaloons? I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. Breaches. I will say I did swing back to the farmhouse uh, again, uh, Jason. I actually uh, I thought that was really good. It was coming back around. So. Yeah. 
Okay. Great stuff, except for the ending. Hmm. That's what she said. Yeah, that's going to wrap it up for today's Suds episode. Shoot it again, Jed. <sighs> we hope you enjoyed this episode, and you can catch all of our episodes online. And as, send us cider drinking songs. As well as on SoundCloud. And cider. Tune in, Stitcher, YouTube, Google Play, PRX, and Spreaker, our native media host iTunes, Google Play, and our own Android app are the easiest ways to enjoy the show on your phone. Just search for Sip Sud Smokes on iTunes or in the Google Play Store. We love your feedback, and you can reach us online at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. And our daily tasty notes flow out on Twitter every day at Sip Sud Smoke. And our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. Please take the time to rate this episode. If you're listening online, your feedback is a gift. Don't rate Dave. <laughs> or maybe you should. <laughs> well, I want to thank our co host for joining us today, good old boy Dave. I'd like to thank uh, three of you. Uh, I'm looking at the one I don't want to thank. <laughs> Are you looking through me or at me? I'm not really quite sure. It's not a difference. Okay, all right. Good old boy Jason. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Go to voice Sparky. Thanks for having me and not making this an intervention. <laughs> Go to boy Mike. Hey, thanks for listening to us. Come back, join us once again. I'll ask you to keep on sipping. It's been real. It's been fun, I guess. I think it's been wonderful. And great. And great. Possibly awesome. great. Maybe it's been all of that. So maybe Special. if it was you know, a seven up as sweet water, brown water. Drink that brown seven up, everybody. <sighs> Keep on chuggling, guys. Keep on chuggling. Tan Ham production of Sip Suds and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time.